let's see what the influence of functional programming over the last decade and a half here. Now, functional programming sort of took off the interest from academia because suddenly what had happened is that Intel introduced a dual core Pentium, I think around about 2005 and 2006. And this is because Moore's law, uh, we were reaching the physical quantum physics uh, of how much miniaturization we could achieve, or Intel were, on very large scale and ultra large scale infrastructure uh, integration chips on silicon chips. And so Intel introduced this dual core idea, a, a way of hyper-threading on a central processing unit, a CPU, a microprocessor. So in theory, we could have two executing paths simultaneously on a, a consumer chip. And so Intel wasn't the first. There was Sun Microsystems started to introduce then, when they were still going, Spark chips. And uh, they were, I guess, uh, uh, reduced instruction set chips at the time that were starting to look at this idea. And it's really simultaneously because we're trying to, we, we started to get uh, for consumers and for the server side uh, this commodity product of uh, chips that could execute multiple uh, execution instruction sets simultaneously through hyperthreading or you know, uh, generally paralyzing instructions that yeah people then start to get excited about threads and uh, and instead of processes they started to get excited about things such as uh, threads and in the recent decades uh, as the decade progressed the actor module and now we have this idea of fibers that is these operational uh, operation uh, operating system idea of loom or fiber that is where we can spin up lots of threads of control and simultaneously uh, uh, multitask bec uh, between these threads so that we get even more abilities to or, or to go concurrent and with that brings the idea of combinations and and then how do you bring two sets of data together to merge them or to sort them and so the interest in functional programming really uh, put research really came back again to to how do we solve these problems concurrently? And then uh, there was a growth in infrastructure, such uh, people uh, as well. The cloud came along, infrastructure as, as a service. So the, the first attempts at this were, uh, I guess, uh, Docker. And uh, we have a mutable architecture. Then we also had version control systems for auditing and which took advantage of a com computer science idea of hashing, which is a way of computing the identity for a, a group set of data. Uh, uh, and then also storage. If you think about Docker, then you will know that that takes advantage of the Unix Linux kernel which uh, where we can virtualize the the operation the filing system the actual execution of users so that uh, we get this idea of uh, uh, abstraction without using a virtual machine or vm to translate from one machine code set to another alternative machine code set we just lumber all of this uh, uh, on kernel systems programs in the Linux kernel. Uh, and then we have distributed computing and distributed computing is, I guess, the growth of microservices. It's the idea of immutability, whereas we have immutable infrastructure instead of across hundreds or thousands of nodes and perhaps millions of nodes in Google's um, Borg system, we then have a mutable record, so if you want to uh, have run a loyalty card system or credit card system, you, you have the ideas of data stores where we have optimistic 
consistency, eventual optimistic replication, and eventual consistency uh, came through. And it's these ideas of sharing nothing uh, by design, so that multiple threads uh, across even distributed nodes can share data. It means that we have the ultimate thread safety there. And so we use functions to combine data sets and to transform to get the actual payment value or the balance on a loyalty card. And so, yeah, functional programming really has impacted that. And then we have a 